Welcome back YouTube, I'm MTG Joe, and today we're playing another Reddit inspired uh, Reddit collab video on Green White Enchantress. Uh, so this was a list that a couple individuals on uh, the Arena subreddit had mentioned as a build around archetype. Uh, so it seems like with a lot of the starter decks, the two cards you get in most common are Seder Enchanter. Uh, so this is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two that whenever you cast an enchantment, you get to draw a card. Uh, and this is where the Enchantress feel usually comes from. It's a number of creatures that cycle and draw you a card every time you play an enchantment. The other card is Druid of the Horns. So this is a 4-mana 2-3. Whenever an aura spell you, can, you cast targets Druid of the Horns, you create a 3-3 beast. Now, generally speaking, the issue with playing uh, like an aura deck is it's very easy to get two for one. You you can try to cast, say, a Knight's Pledge onto your Druid of the Horns, and in response, your opponent can kill the Druid of the Horns, meaning you lose both the creature and the enchantment. Um, so the way around that, and there's not many creatures unfortunately in standard right now that really can play with this, is by using the effect Hexproof, which uh, prevents your opponent from targeting your spells directly. Now this doesn't prevent it from board wipes, uh, so like for example Vine Mare can still be killed by uh, Deafening Clarion or Kaya's Wrath, anything like that. But we're trying to play a couple resilient creatures in terms of hexproof. Uh, we have Knight of Malice, which also has hexproof from black, where a lot of the removal is in place. And then the rest of the deck, we have some Llanowar Elves to ramp, one Dawn of Hope. Uh, so this is just to create some more creatures if we run out of creatures. Uh, some Lifelink, and it also plays with the enchantment theme. Uh, for Auras, we have some Knight's Pledge, just makes our creature 2-2 stronger. Uh, Sentinel's Mark can be used as a combat trick. Or to give us lifelink. Uh, Talons of the Wildwood is a pretty good one because we can always get it back from the graveyard if need be, as well as giving trample if we create like a very large creature could be useful. Uh, we have two Danatha which makes our auras cost less and it's just a wall of text with first strike vigilance and lifelink. Um, one Squire's Devotion which will give a 1-1 one -one in lifelink and also create a creature. Uh, this gets around stuff that makes a sack, uh, like the Eldest Reborn. And then we're playing two Shalai. Uh, Shalai will protect all our other permanents, so whether it be for Mortify, uh, one of our enchantments, or like burn spells directly to kill them, we can protect. And then if we flood out, we can just pump mana into our second ability. And then for removal, we have two Conclave Tribunals, which we can convoke out, and two Ixalan's Binding. Again, playing around that enchantment theme. Uh, for lands, we got some Temple Gardens. I only have one Sun Petal Grove. I don't really play much Green White. Um, so ideally, you'd want uh, four and four. We're just playing some Guild Gates here. If you don't have these lands, then uh, you can play some Guild Gates. It'll be a little bit slower. Um, but overall, the deck's not too expensive in terms of rares. Like, obviously, shaving the lands cuts it down, but lands are important usually. I believe you get one Shalai in one of the starter decks, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but it's basically two rares here, and then a Dawn of Hope, uh, which really Dawn of Hope can just become another Conclave Tribune or like Salon's Binding. Everything else is common or uncommon in the deck. So we'll test it out a couple games. I'm not too sure how strong this deck will be, um, but this is where we get surprised. Like the Cavalcade deck we built, with the, which was another Reddit uh, brew, um, which we brewed with a couple others. Uh, that one was surprisingly okay. Um, so we have these themes, we can definitely play around with it. But let's take it for a couple matches. Uh, so as we wait for a match to start, if you haven't done so already, uh, subscribing is a free and easy way to show your support for the channel. If you enjoy the content I'm putting out, it's a great way to show your thanks. Um, so let's get started. Um, if there is another like build around theme, uh, if you're not re uh, participating in like the Reddit, subreddit, uh, feel free to drop a comment. Um, we can brew through here if you're not uh, following me on Twitter or Instagram, mtg underscore joe2, the number two. Um, we can also connect and chat there. Um, it's been really fun to brew like this. So here, let's drop down the Danatha. It gives a first strike. And then next turn, we can go pretty 
nuts with suiting her up. Opponent looks to be on some sort of mono white build. Okay, so here. I actually. Do we want to go all in on Danitha? Yeah. So here. Actually, probably not going to play everything on her just in case she gets exiled. With white, they do have, uh, like these weenie decks usually have like Conclave Tribunal. Play out the Knight of Grace and then put Squeeze Devotion on that. But this looks like a pretty solid start. Turn 3, 5, 5, Trample, First Strike, Vigilance, Life Link. Okay, so the opponent gets rid of the Vine Woods. We can get it back. If we hit another land, we can also play it out next turn. Interesting uh, main board. Um, so here we need to decide. So I think we just attack with both. Play out the Seder. Uh, look to get uh, some card draw going. So opponent blocks here. First strike. So we can play that out. So seeing what the opponent's up to. Take Vengeance, this looks like some sort of budgety mono white. Donna Hopes don't really stack that well. Uh, so here... So for... Gonna attack with the two. Our lands tapped a little weird, so we could play out the Llanowar Elf without tapping our Llanowar Elf. But we threaten lethal here. And the opponent concedes. So with them not having real removal, this matchup's not too bad. Like, if you get one of the big creatures to go unchecked, then especially a turn to Danitha, just gains us a ton of life. So, yeah, like I was saying, if there's any other uh, build around, brews you want to work together, just drop a, a note in the chat. So this is where it gets a little awkward. We don't really have a play till turn four because these are all dead cards effectively, so we're gonna mulligan. We'll keep this. Uh, Sentinel's Mark could be okay. So this looks like Mono White Life Gain, maybe Black White Vampires. Really need to hit some line drops here. Giving this vigilance and the extra toughness will be really good. If they start getting like a Johnny's Pride mate, then it'll be troublesome. But we can exile at least the first one. Make them have the pump spell. They would have killed it anyways, so we're fine with them. Wasting that, we got another one to come down. Hit the land on time. Sneak. 
the horn. See if the opponent attacks in here. Okay, so here, no blocks for us. We'll attack in. Actually, no attacks because it doesn't have vigilance. We'll exile this one. This is an example. So they put the Knight's Pledge on it. And we ended up two for one in them. Ideally, next turn we hit a land. Healer's Hawk in the air. Uh, and they have the seal away. So probably a bit too slow with us stumbling on lines here. Seder can give us card draw. We're taking three this turn. Oh, interesting, the opponent didn't want to trade there. Okay, so we hit the land, which is good. Gain three life back. Play out Knight of Grace. So here, I think we just go. So Donna Hope draws us a card, but we could play it next turn and draw two cards. Uh, we'll hold back. They're only attacking us for one. Next turn we could draw two cards off Donna Hope. It's not bad. Gain some some life back. We need to find a way to get rid of this healer hawk. Okay, so Danatha's not bad. Gives us two spells to play this turn. So we he will play with the Danatha here, play the land, and pass the turn. Next turn, Resquire's Devotion on the Danatha. Pretty aggressive attack here by the opponent. Especially with the first strike. Not quite sure why they did that. We'll pump up Danatha. Awesome. Opponent concedes. So we could have got Druids going next turn. So it hasn't been terrible so far. Uh, it'd be interesting to play something with a bit more removal just to see how it fa plays out. Because that'll be the best test of the deck itself. bit slower of a hand. Let's try this one out. If we can keep our stuff alive, Seder into Druids would be pretty good. Playing out the Guild Gate on one is usually where I want to be. Okay, so on the play is good. At least we get a land before our opponent. So 
This is red. Let's see if they have the burn spells to take out our stuff. So we hit our fourth land. Also is not the, the worst. We can play out druids. So next turn we go satyr. Hope it lives. So if we can dodge a couple turns of removal, electrostatic's fine, also how they tapped means they don't have a one mana burn spell. We'll take the two there, we can gain quite a bit of life with this deck. So we'll play with the druid. Next turn we can go pretty nuts with it. Make two 3-3 three, three beasts. Draw two cards. Just need to dodge one removal spell. Go with the talons first. And then the knight's pledge. Talons will give it Trample, which is relevant. Okay. So they shock that. A little bit annoying. Wonder if they have the Lightning Strike here as well. So we're going to lead on this, just in case they do kill it in response, we can always get it back. Drawing Danatha would also be good here because we could play out Danatha and both enchantments. Okay, so let's see if this survives. Okay, we're in a good spot now. Ideally next turn if we draw a land we can binding the field because that's one way they, they can do a lot of damage to us. Not sure quite what the opponent's on. He's got an aggressive mix of cards. Skewer the critics, they'll play the land, skewer, we'll see if they take down one of our beasts or if they go for our face. If they take down the beast, then they can actually attack in for two. Opponent's thinking. Alright, so that's actually really good to gain us some life. So we'll attack in with all. They have a free block with the field. We attack with all, so it might convince them to block otherwise. That gains us 6 life, basically invalidates everything they've done in this game so far. Sweet. So 3-0 and with the deck. Even with that slower draw we were able to. Let's jam a couple more in. Okay, so this hand, if we draw land, we're good. We go first, so we'll try it out. Okay, so 
So mono white. Elf ensures we can get to Danatha next turn at least. So basically a land. So red white. This one's okay. So instigator. Let's just go wide, red, uh, Boros. No blocks. Lands awesome. A little awkward that we. I still play it out like this. This has the life link, so we can trade. I want to draw a white source so we can both Seder and play the Sentinel's Mark to gain a life. Okay, lightning Strike there. No blocks. Mm. Play out the Vine Mare here. Just trying to draw into an extra land. Bugler, draw a couple more. Hopefully they whiff. Doesn't look like it. Okay, so another Vanguard. Uh, it's an elf. So interesting here. So we can get to five toughness, gain us five life. We could play out Shalai. Interesting play as well is to Ixalan's Binding. Let's just take the turn off. Set up. See what the opponent decides to do. We have the option to basically gain six life. And if we can play Shalai down. Okay, so they lightning strike the Seder. See if they want to run anything into our creatures. No white mana is really awkward. Just pass the turn. This way we could just pump our stuff up larger. Opponent's going wide, but we can just go bigger. See if they attack in. Okay, so they waste the tribunal. So knight here. So here we're just gonna binding. Get back our Shalai. Probably is the only removal they have in their deck. Like outside of Lightning Strike, but they need two burn spells to take down Shalai, and if they're wasting that, I'm okay. This also protects us from being burnt. Opponent does gain two life each turn, but we can make really big creatures. So opponent alpha strikes. Uh, just block like that. We'll see what kind of effects they have.
So we have another binding. Doesn't do a whole lot. This is a. So getting us some life. The five toughness will be really hard for them to deal with as well. If they attack in again, I'm probably inclined to throw an elf in the way. Okay, so history of Benalia. We're gonna exile Benalia. Pass the turn. So now we're just really hoping for something. Donna Hope would be good. Um, some more auras. That's terrible for us. Uh, pass the turn here. They're one mana short from pumping it, particularly they're one white mana short, but they can start chipping in for three in the air each turn. We need Conclave Tribunal. Gain a life. And rekindling Phoenix. Let's see if they block funny here. But yeah. Opponent's got this one. So not a bad showing for the deck for a first draft. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. If there's any other brew around cards you're looking for to build, um, join the conversation. Like I said, I'm MTG underscore Joe on Reddit, uh, particularly the Arena subreddit. If not, we can uh, join the conversation here on YouTube in the comments or on uh, Twitter or Instagram at MTG underscore Joe number two there. Like so, MTG underscore Joe two. Thanks for watching and have a great one.